Okay. Okay. So so basically some more effects. You know, last time I think it, it was interesting. You said you like to to keep snippets so that you can build uh, different effects quickly. I do. I have a I have a program that you you give it up front a list of snippets and then it'll do a scan over the code and I might touch on this at the end of the show too that it'll see if there's a code that isn't defined and then it'll look in the list of snippets and see oh I, I have it here so I gotta I've got to patch in this bit of code and it, so far it works but when it breaks it's oh, wow it's, <laughs> it's an interesting debugging process when it breaks So this is the effect, and it has an extend parameter so that you can widen the geometry, and a frequency so you can affect the wave that's going on. I'm sorry about that. That was something that's something I want to touch on in a second. And I found I, I played around with this for a while, and I found that if you set the frequency, if you set the extend all the way down so it's not extending. You set the frequency really high, you get a, you get a slight shimmer. I don't know if it shows up yeah. on your end. It's yeah. maybe too subtle. It's very subtle. I'm, I'm seeing it, though. Yeah. So, but there, there's a shimmer going on. That's, it gets close to what I had in mind, but you can still achieve different effects like this, you know, just tuning how wide the geometry gets, and then maintaining a sine wave up and down. Yeah, that almost has a liquid sort of uh, watery effect to it. Yeah. And, and I found if you if you slowly move the extend, it kind of has a dream sequence kind of effect. Where, uh, or, or what is it? Where in some television show they always have, I remember when, and then they fade away. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I like to see how you can you could combine that with maybe some kind of sort of blur, and then and then just sort of fade out into some some memory or something. Yes. So okay. that's with no no frequency and various extends. And I also mentioned oh here's here's it with a snapshot. So you can apply an effect to a snapshot, but you can't use a snapshot as a sampler to a shader yet, as far as I'm aware. <laughs> That's what uh, Barry and I have mentioned. That if, if if those open up, that will open up a lot of possibilities. So that that would make an interesting platformer uh, effect. There, I see. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're trying to hit a, a couple moving moving platforms, and uh, the whole thing's wiggling, wobbling all over the place. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. I I also I mentioned to this guy that you might have you might be inside. In your in your game, say you're in a desert palace, and you only see what's outside every now and then, so it wouldn't matter so much that there were hard edges on the image. So this one doesn't bother doing the cutaway, but it still does the wave effect. And I will show the basic effect here. So. This finds, oh, also, you need to give it a center position because the wave has to know what to displace from. So if I go back to, so if, it, if it's going to, say, what happened there? <laughs> if, it, if it wants to know that I have to be this far over, you know, I have to wave this far back. It's got to have a center point, and you have to feed that into into the effect somewhere. So that's what this center does. I also uh, wait. So you calculate the offset from that. You know, it's x minus the center, and you extend it. The sine sine will be negative one if the input is negative one. It'll be positive one if the input. Or, sorry, if the input is negative, it'll be positive if the input is positive. So you find how much I need to move over, how much I need to move my vertex over. And then you have to fix the texture coordinates, because otherwise they're just going to stretch along with it. But 
if you do that, sorry, but if you do that, your coordinates will all hug at the right side, or like it's they'll get smeared like this. So you need to you need to get the texture coordinates so they ride the top of the wave. <laughs> So they're up here and not over here. And so these two figure that out, and then I just maintain the, the angle of the sine wave. And then they're decoded in the fragmentator. So that figures out what the relative position is, if it's between 0 and 1, or between negative 0.5 and 0.5, rather. If it is, it cuts, it cuts the pixel out, but otherwise it, it draws that pixel normally. And what I, what I also did was I made a version that uses the texture coordinate as opposed to passing in a position, because then you can detect, as long as you aren't using um, a, an image sheet like I, like I discussed last week, then you'll know that you're your texture coordinates are between 0 and 1. So you can use the texture coordinate to center it instead. So if the texture coordinate is 1, you'll get 0.5, so you'll have a positive number. If it's negative 1, you'll, or if it's 0, you'll get negative 0.5, which is a negative number, so you know which side to, to stretch. And there, there are pros and cons of these. Because if if you use the texture coordinate approach and you rotate this, then it'll just it'll only stretch along the texture. So it'll it'll be going at an angle if you have it rotated a few degrees. Whereas in in this one, where it's using the actual position, it'll always be stretching left to right. Although it might it might get a little distorted if it veers too far up center. And I had uh, another non-discarding version of this. And I have this other one open because I wanted to bring up some a quick point that it gets a little choppy if you run it for too long. And I'll, I'll, I'll try to cover how some of these problems show up next week. But basically, after the time has gone on for a bit too long, you'll get some really high numbers, or not even really high, but just high enough that they start to break down under under some of these precision requirements. So I, I think this probably requires some sort of fix on Corona's end, like something where you can reset the time every now and then. Yeah. So that is, just, is that just a artifact of the math itself? I mean, there's some kind of like I mean, just the the variable that you're passing in is it's the seconds since the program has begun. So after a while, it gets it gets to the point where either it's high enough that it'll it'll exceed some of these precisions in the shader, or you're already multiplying it. You're saying you know time the time times <laughs> 5.6 or whatever and and that that brings the numbers way up so sooner or later you get into territory where problems occur with the numbers and it, it, I need I, I need to lay out some background to explain exactly what those problems okay. are but, but, they, but almost like a like a com compounding issue or I mean you know give people kind of a, a relative term it's it's the same problem in a different form that I mentioned can occur with high precision shaders when you don't have high precision available. That you get these jumps and you, you try to interpolate across and then <laughs> they they form hard seams. Okay. Does anybody on the on the panel have questions about any of this so far? Is there anything that's confusing or need more clarification on? Nothing so far. Nothing nice. so far. Okay. Good stuff. So you understand it then. <laughs> I understand most of it, although um, re regarding the uh, precision business, um, maybe I missed it, but aside from restarting, is there a way to restart 
you could just simply re okay, I can't even get this out of my mouth. Let's try. You could just reapply the filter to the object to it's, correct it, right? No, because it's a it's a global to the whole shader oh. environment. So it's so the shader would have to be rebuilt or something. The shader is going to get the input from outside. So is, it, okay, is it sim? Did you say it's sim time since the application started, or since the shader was created? Since the application started. Oh. So I think in in a game where you have periodic hard breaks, you could do it between levels if they provide something to reset that. Mm -hmm. For a level for a game with long running levels, it might be hard to do gracefully unless you could coordinate something where you could blend between <laughs> a high number and zero. But yeah. I don't know if there's a, a one-size-fits-all solution here, but no, I think, I think there needs to be a reset time at least. Right. I might file a bug report on this, but I, I need to... It almost sounds like you might need to. If there's no workaround for, getting, for handling uh, the time anomaly on a low precision system, or even a medium precision it, it can system. Show up on, a, on a higher one. The, uh, you, can, you can mitigate some of the effects by using you know, the sign of the time, but even that can run into the problems once the, once the time gets really high. So. Mm -hmm. But if, if, if that could be passed in from, from the corona side, that would, you know, the sign of the time using double precision. No but I, there, there's no one size fits all solution that I'm aware of. But mm -hmm. I'll go into a little more detail on this next time. All right. Yeah. So it, this is a deep topic, but it just makes me wonder how other folks have solved this in other scenarios, because this has got to be a common issue. I'm right. wondering if you subtract a really, a really uh, large number from this time variable, uh, will it fix the issue? Don't you know? Yeah. It, in certain circumstances, it might. But I don't. I don't think it's a one size fits all. See, dividing. Dividing can sometimes bring it down. If, if it hasn't gotten too high, then it might. You might not see some of these imprecisions show up after you have divided. But, but. I don't. I don't know. You'd have to do that on a case by case basis. 